Hey guys, it's Connie, welcome back. Please don't forget to subscribe. Yes, I know you've seen me with this beautiful Ionic 6 back in March in rainy Vancouver, and now I have it at home for a week, and I have even the same color. This is the matte green, and I know it doesn't look green in every light. It is green, and I love the matte color. And this is after having it for five full days, and it's still pretty clean looking, and I've, I've driven it quite a bit. So we already covered all the details in my previous video and I will link it below. So today I'm just gonna talk about things I like and don't like, maybe some Lux features I was surprised about this week, charging because that's what we all wanna know about EVs, and the app because we didn't get to play around with the app when I had this for a day in back in March. If you'll remember, we have pixels everywhere. We have pixels in the headlights, pixels across the front of the car, pixels on the mirror caps, pixel, pixels on the door um, handles. We have pixels everywhere. This is a really sleek aerodynamic design. It is designed to be aerodynamic to save range and electric energy because of course this is a fully electric Ionic 6. It even has these cool air flaps that let in extra air for to cool the electric motors. And did we talk about remote park assist? Just at the touch of a button, I can move this Ionic 6 from outside the car. Like, isn't that just wild? One of the things I've learned about EVs is that they're not all the same in terms of charging speed or charging capabilities. And I will say that with the Ionic 5 and this Ionic 6, I'm having trouble charging them at home on a level one charger. Typically, I charge when I'm at home all the time. So if I'm home for an hour, two hours, 12 hours, I plug in the EV in my driveway overnight all the time. I have not seen this Ionic 6 recoup more than about 3% overnight on a full overnight charge. And I just find that disappointing. I had the Ford Lightning recently, which is a massive pickup truck, fully electric, and I didn't have to take it to the charge station one time all week. It charged very well for me at home on a level one. Whereas I don't find that with the Ionics, they charge as fast as some other EVs. So again, I'm gonna have to take this to a DC fast charger before I return it on Monday because we have to return the EVs 80% or higher full. So one thing I've noted about the Ionics that I'm not super in love with. All right, we have a really cool sleek back end design on here. I think it's really funky and different and sporty and it really is different from other sporty sedans out there. I love that they differentiated it. And then of course we have all these pixels again, which uh, turn red with the brake lights. And then we have a red light bar along this fin up here as well. We even have a power trunk and quite a, quite a bit of space with a 60-40 uh, split rear seat. And then even a little lower cubby here, which is where the charging cable would be held. But of course I charge at home. So it is currently at home in my garage plugged in. We have a ton of room back here. Again, watch my other video. I will walk through the back seat some more. But with my five foot one driving position and the okay. leg room back here, I have tons of space and I love that the floor is completely flat in here, of course, because this is an electric car. We have a very comfortable interior here. We have a huge dual uh, screen piece of glass. We have we have our start stop button here, dual climate control. And if you tap this, it will bring up the heated and cooled seats right away. And then the climate menu as well. Typical for Hyundai, we have our Apple CarPlay, which is wired Apple CarPlay EV settings in here. So you can see what your battery life is at, tells you where my nearest charge station is. And I was just there to see if I could do a fast charge. Uh, don't watch my other video i show you when i'm driving what this looks like how it tells me when the battery is powering all four wheels versus the back wheel and this shows me um, charging or using power it's a very cool graphic and then we have instead of paddle shifters these paddles control our regen so by default when i start the car it's on level three regen but if i tap this once 
it'll put me in yeah. bipedal mode, which is like one pedal drive in this Ionic 6. And I always drive in iPedal mode. We have some cool um, pixels here that light up and change colors depending on if you're increasing the temperature in here or the temperature changing from drive to reverse. These light up different colors. It's pretty cool. And then we have drive modes right here on the steering wheel, which are, it's a button, sport, normal, and eco. And oddly enough, we have our door lock and unlock and window up down buttons here in the center console. They're not on the door where you would typically see them and they do that to keep the door design super sleek and very modern with some ambient lighting here. And I love how this large is also like the handle. And I love the door design. It's super sleek and modern, um, but it would take me some getting used to having the window power buttons here and the lock unlock then we have a wireless charging pad and a USB port for your smartphone because of course it is wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We also get a really cool cubby or pass through underneath the console here, which is a really great spot for a purse or a couple of things like we have in here today while we're out filming. I really do love that little ledge. All right, one of the things I didn't get to play with when we had the Ionic 6 for just a day is the My Hyundai Blue Link app which I really, really love. We get a lot of cool functions in here. It's telling me right now what my battery's at, my range is at, it's currently unlocked. Of course, I'm sitting in it. You can locate the vehicle, lock, unlock. You can start it remotely. You can stop it remotely, flashlights, and the horn and the lights. I think the coolest thing is that if I was plugged in right now, it would tell me what the battery's at, how fast it's charging, how much time it's going to take to get to back to 100% and my range. And then we have other functions like messages, car care, and things like that. I did a lot of driving uh, video in my original YouTube. You can watch it below. Uh, again, this one is 320 horsepower, 442 pound-feet of torque. It feels great to drive. It's incredibly smooth and quiet. 435 kilometers in range. This one will set you back just under 64,000 Canadian dollars and around 57,600 US dollars. But the real things that I love about this Ionic 6 is that Highway Drive Assist 2.0. And again, I did driving video with this on the highway, showing the screens, showing the adaptive cruise and how it works. It'll even change lanes for you on my original video. That I think is amazing. That park assist I just showed you, amazing. Don't love the charging on this. I've had a lot, ex a lot of experience with different EVs. Owned a Tesla for almost two years and I've been in a lot of different test drives that are fully electric like this. And they all charge different. They're not the same. And I just have a level one household plug-in at home in my garage and I always plug in my EVs overnight all the time when I'm at home. And I just can't get, seem to get out of a lot of juice out of these the Ionic 6 or the Ionic 5 when I had it. And that means I have to take it to a fast charge to get my weekly charge, my weekly use out of it. And I don't have a lot of fast chargers near my house. And the fastest one is a 50 kilowatt per hour charge. And it's not that slow. I mean, the Ionic is capable of a much faster DC fast charge. And I just don't have any super fast chargers near my house. What do you think of the Ionic 6? Would it be your choice over a Tesla or a Polestar? Let me know in the comments and we'll see you soon.